what's up everybody? I'm Corey Congilio. Welcome to my home studio here in Nashville, Tennessee. If you've been following me for a while or were friends on social media, you know that my love for the Oxbox from Universal Audio knows no boundaries. So let's talk a little bit about the new update that they've offered and some of my favorite presets. So in 2016, I'm living in an apartment complex here in Nashville, doing sessions from my house, recording online lesson content. I was using the Avid 11 rack for a lot of my online content and sessions that I would do remotely. And I would get messages, texts, DMs, emails from people saying, how are you getting that tone? What's your amp? What's your pedals? And I really hated disappointing them to tell them it was just this pretty, at that point, inexpensive plastic digital modeler. I really didn't want to go back down that road because I didn't want to learn a new interface, work with a piece of gear that might be outdated in a few years, when really all I wanted to use was my vintage and hand-wired tube amps, but I couldn't do it because I couldn't mic them up. So a friend of mine said, you really have to check out Pete Thorne's videos on load boxes and IRs. And I said, what the heck are those things? So I think it was 2017, I met some friends at the NAMM show that worked for Universal Audio and they said, you really need to see what we're doing. I immediately was pissed because Aux was everything I wanted it to be and I wanted some of those other products to be too. I turned to them and I said, I need to be your demo guy. They said, we'll see what we can do. And lo and behold, a few years later, uh, I've been working as the Aux demonstrator at NAMM shows for Universal Audio and doing a assorted you know, other things for them as well. They're an amazing company and the folks that are the brains behind these products they make, they're unlike anyone in the business. <laughs> So if you're interested in this kind of technology, you're probably familiar with Aux, but what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and take a look at the update, the new cabinets, the foot switch capability that they now offer, and some of the presets as well. I'll even show you some of my favorite presets that I've created to work with my wonderful two rock amps here as well. So living in Guitar Town, it's really great to have such a wonderful community of folks that can help us do things like Exact Tone Solutions in Nashville here, who uh, also have some Friedman amps on hand. They loaned me one for this video since I really didn't have uh, a, a quality high gain amp that I wanted to use to show you some of the, the new speaker models that Aux has to offer. All right, so stick around because I'm going to show you the new updated features as well as some of my own favorite presets with my two rock amps. I'll play a bunch of guitars and uh, we'll have some fun. <laughs> So this is a 412 GB30 cabinet. And the thing that is really cool about this is it's a classic sort of basket weave Marshall style cabinet full of greenback 30 type speakers. It really does a wonderful job of representing that sound that we love. It's a really kind of an industry standard. 
tight bass response, great treble definition, and really one of the many speaker cabinets that I know a lot of Aux users have been into. So let's check it out a little bit more. <laughs> Sounds great with this. And really what you'll notice is that I have a little bit of plate reverb dialed in. And another thing I love about these kinds of speaker cabinets in this kind of tone, when I set up my preset, I love to go for two large diaphragm condensers, the 67 and the 414. It really blew my mind when I noticed that uh, a lot of these presets that were centered around like ACDC, or in this case, maybe like uh, sort of a 70s rock band like Kansas might use, um, they would really go for these large diaphragm microphones that would capture the sort of d huge total nuance of the speaker, highs, mids, and lows. Lots of times dynamic mics really just, um, they sound great and I love them and they're also awesome for the mixes, but they don't often feel as big as the guitar sound really is. So that's the 412 GB30. Green back, just what you'd expect. Let's take a look at the next one. So this is the UK V30, again, closed back 412 cabinet, industry standard for rock and metal for sure. You can probably hear that this is more of an aggressive mid-range type of speaker. Uh, I'll go back and cycle through all of them, uh, the 412 cabinets that is, so we can really hear the, difference, the differences between the three. I think it's pretty remarkable. And it's really gonna help you when choosing the cabinet for your session or your recording application or whatever you choose. <laughs> So this is the CAV30 cabinet. It's got that cool black look, very Mesa Boogie-ish. Uh, players like Mark Tremonti might favor this kind of cabinet. Also has that very scooped sound. You know, this is a really cool speaker if you need to get your metal fix for sure. This whole, uh, you know, V30 thing that they did in these cabinets that they modeled really appeals to the player that needs a heavier tone for sure. Uh, it's working great with this Friedman amp, which is kind of more of a JTM45 thing, and I don't really have the gain pushed up that much. I'm going to increase the gain and I'll play through each preset. They're all mic the same, same amount of reverb, so you really hear the difference between cabinets. <laughs> Now the speaker you just heard there was what they call the JBF120. It's a 212 cabinet and it really pays homage to the JBL D120 type of speaker that really has been famous with players like everyone from Van Halen to Jerry Garcia, Buck Owens, those types of folks. And why do I mention Buck Owens and Jerry Garcia? Well, Jerry loved Buck Owens and he really wanted to achieve that great clean sound that Buck was getting. And Buck told him, 
put JBLs in your twin and you'll be ready to go. So I don't have a twin or a showman. I use my two rock boom field drive here because it's a high wattage amplifier, super clean. And I was really trying to achieve more of that surf tone. But if you're into the Jerry era of the mongrel strat and that sort of thing, my strat's a mongrel. It's pretty okay. <laughs> uh, it's really going to get you into that ballpark. <laughs> Now the speaker that you're going to see pop up behind me is the JBG 125. It's a 112 speaker model. I have it mic'd with the two large diaphragm condensers just to keep our ears sort of acclimated. That's what I've been using throughout this demo. I'll show you some other things later, but this is a killer speaker similar to the JBL type that we uh, that we showed before, but it doesn't have that aluminum dust cap. It has more of a paper style dust cap. And really these speakers were favored by boutique amp designers of the 70s and 80s. I'll let you figure out who those might be. Another cool feature of the AUX update is that you can add a simple foot switch to turn effects on or off. My friends at XTS made this three button foot switch for me, but you can use simple ones from companies like Digitech or TC Electronics, and it doesn't have to be a three button. It can be a one, two, or three button. Now, why is this useful? Well, I like to set up patches where maybe I don't want the plate reverb on. I want to use the reverb from my amp or my pedals. I can turn that reverb on and then hit this switch and turn my reverb on. Now, what if I want something maybe for like a boost, like a lead boost or a frequency boost? I could program the EQ to boost my mid-range a little bit, step on a switch and do that. All of that stuff is really easy to do. The assigning function couldn't be easier. I suggest just getting an inexpensive foot switch and trying it out with a TRS cable, plug it into aux, and you're ready to go. So I get asked a lot about what presets I might come up with for the aux and what speakers and microphones I like to use. Now in the preset world, I don't really go crazy with a lot of reverb and delay. I will use the internal effects uh, when I'm recording with aux, but I also love to use the pedals that I have, whether it be my reverb and delays or my overdrives, compressor, that sort of stuff. I want to have that stuff available to me. And I really like to treat aux as if it's just a speaker. You know, there's often times where I'll go into a session, they have a cabinet already mic'd up for me, I plug my head in and I make adjustments on the fly. It's that quick sometimes. And really, you don't have the luxury of tweaking and dialing in. So I try to treat my real life situation like that too, because I got to get to the music and I got to get the track out to the client. So what you're going to see pop up behind me here is more of the 112 DUX style cab, they call it. Now, this is a 60s style cabinet that I have mic'd with a 57 and the 160 ribbon style microphone. Now, the 160 ribbon is has become really my favorite of the ribbon category. I wish I had a real one, but hey, I'm not micing amps that much, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so what I like to do is take that same micing scheme but then change cabinets. And I'm just gonna play a couple riffs and then I'll switch my rig control here. You'll see the uh, the diagram change or the, uh, the, the app change to the next cabinet. So you're not really hearing any differences with microphones, you're just hearing the cabinets. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna use a really clean setting so you can really hear the amplifier in its cleanest state. The reverb you're hearing is from the Two Rock Studio Signature. It's a 35 watt amp. I have it set on the 50 watt setting here on the aux. That's more of an input gain setting for your aux. If you're using a 100 watt amp like the Bloomfield here or a Marshall or something like that, you wanna go with the higher wattage setting. Okay, let's hear this 112 DUX cab with the 57 and the 160 ribbon. <laughs> Okay, I'll switch the dial. We're going to go to a 212 sort of custom ported 65 watt speaker combination here. Much different sounding. <laughs> Quickly go to the 412 cabinet. Uh, 
Again, we're using a really clean amp tone, reverb from the amp. What I'm gonna do now is walk you through those same three speaker cabinets, but we're going to use two large diaphragm condensers. <laughs> Hear that one? Here's the 212. And the 412. Now let's start back at the beginning and hear all six. The first three will be with that 57 and 160 style microphones through the 112, 212, and 412. 412. And then we're going to use the large diaphragm configuration on the same speaker cabinet. So we'll go back to one. And let's hear that 112. This will still be the same once you put a drive pedal in the equation. You'll hear the nuances and how it really brings out different characteristics in the overdrive. Okay, so here's the 112 again. <laughs> 212. 412. <laughs> Now the same combinations with different microphones. One more time. So when do I choose to use which one? Well, to me, when I heard that 112 speaker, it really takes me into something I love to do, which is play more Americana type stuff with singer songwriters. A lot of that music is created with fenders, blackface type uh, sounds, brown face fenders. The mid ranger quality really works for me when I want that those frequencies to stick out and maybe a rock track. And then in the 412 world, if you really pay attention, you can hear how it kind of got big. The bottom end got a little rounder and it has an open sound, particularly when you go to the 412 with the large diaphragm microphones. Now, I really think those combinations are all I need to sit in the track. The rest of the tones I get from my amplifier and my pedals. These six I played you are really my go-to presets. I can take aux without the iPad or a computer, go right to the session, give them two stereo outputs or mono or whatever I want to do. And really I can deliver tone that I know is really going to sound good on any track and in any situation. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. This piece of gear is really near and dear to my heart. I have a lot of fun with it. I hope you dug the demo. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you know about all the videos I put out, whether they're gear demos or guitar lesson content. And say hi to me over at my website, coreycongilio.com. The links are below. I'd love to stay in touch with you. There's always something going on at my website and I'm always doing something with a guitar. So stay tuned.